here's my SketchUp model. I did place a roof on there in the past. And now what I'd like to do is actually fix the roof so it's sitting on my building. So I'm going to come in here and select the roof. Just angle my view a little bit so I can see it better. I'm going to type M, enter. And I'm going to move it from this corner straight down. And to make sure that it's going straight down, I'm going to use my up arrow. And that's going to constrain it to blue. I want it to line up to my walls. But as I hover over the wall here, it gets covered up by the roof. So what I need to do is pan down so that I can see my wall and then click on it like this. So panning down is one way to do that. Another way to do that is to select it again from the same position and this time turn on x-ray mode and I'll constrain it to the blue axis by using my up arrow. And now as I move my cursor, now it finds that endpoint that takes care of it and then i will go ahead and toggle x-ray off and then tap my space bar and click that's the roof in place i want to first of all switch back to my shaded with textures mode so i have a masonry finish on there and then what i'd like to do is i'd like to add some shingles to my roof i'm going to come over here to my materials and I'm going to look for my roofing, which is right there. I'm going to select some shingles, and I think I'll go with this one right here. So I'm going to click on that material and then click right here. It looks okay. I might change my mind. I might decide to go with this roofing shingle, asphalt. Whichever one you pick is fine. But when I do this, it's applying the material to the entire group, and that's what I want most of the time. But this time, I would like to have the edge here of my soffit to be a different material. So what I'm going to do is tap my space bar, and then I'm going to double click the roof. Now it's isolated. Now I can go ahead and change the material on the faces that represent the soffit. I can go ahead and pick a different color. So I can go in here to my colors, or better yet, I can go into my metals. Now let's see if there's a metal there. Maybe this metal rusted. I don't know. I always like to try these things out. So I'll click on it and I'll start by simply selecting this face and then this one also. Tap my space bar, click off of my group, and this is the effect I get. And as I look at it, I'm not quite pleased with it. So what I'm going to do is actually come in over here. And I think I'd like to use the same color that I have on my door frame and window frame. I'm going to select the eyedropper, sample the paint, and I'm sampling this paint color right here. And then I'll go back to my space bar. And then I'm going to double click my roof again. And then I'll pick the material and then apply it to the faces. So I apply it to that face, to this one, and then I'll go around, applying it to that face. Keep going around and apply it there. And now I tap my space bar, click away from my group, and this is what I have. Now, notice how it also painted the bottom. And this is where I may want to change that. And maybe I keep the same material color on the bottom. I don't know. I will apply it now, and then when it comes time to set up my views, I'll see if it's working or not. But as a placeholder right now, let me give this a double click and select the material, pick the underside, and then use my space bar to get my select tool back and then click off of it. So this is what I have for the roof. Now, what I'm putting together here is just an example of what you can do. You are embellishing as much as you want. I want to do a different kind of a roof here. I'm actually going to take this one right now and hide it just so it stays there. But instead of doing that roof, that hip roof, I want to do a gable roof because I want to see what happens. And I want to show you what would happen if my walls extend up and they have to intersect uh, with that roof. Give me just a moment because I'm going to place another roof on here and I'm going to zoom up and over like this. And I'd like to have a roof that really 
encompasses the whole building and then I can give it an overhang. What I will try to do here is draw a rectangle from this corner all the way across and I'd like to constrain it to blue. So I'm gonna use my up arrow key like that. I wanna see if it's possible if it's possible to follow that line, but it doesn't, well, it looks like it wants to follow it, but then it also wants to follow that one. And I guess what I'll have to do right now is either pick one or the other. So I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna click right here. It's gonna give me one half. And now what I'd like to do is find that corner or identify it. So I'm gonna draw a line and I'm going to take it from this end all the way over. That's where it's going to line up, which is great. So now I have that point. And I could have started there. So actually, let me do that here. I'll undo the line, undo the rectangle. So I'll draw a line again from this point over. And it looks like it wants to align there. So I'll take it. And then I'll tap the escape key. So now I can come back and draw a rectangle. Now it's from this end point all the way across to that one. And this is my roof. And what I'm going to do is give it a triple click and then right click it and make it a group right away. That way, when I go to edit, I can focus on just that roof. I'd like this roof to have an overhang. How much of an overhang? I'll check my AutoCAD drawing real quick. I still have AutoCAD open and I'm going to check my elevations. I'm going to zoom in here, just do a quick distance check. And it was a two foot overhang. So I'll go back to my drawing, my SketchUp model that is, and I'm going to offset the roof out two feet. And then I'm going to click on my select tool. I'm gonna to click on this line one time and delete. Leaves me with the other line segments and I'll triple click. See how it only selects the lines and nothing else, which is great. And then I tap the delete key and I have the two foot overhang. I want to give my soffit a thickness and that thickness is going to be one foot. And if I'm not sure, I'll go back to my AutoCAD drawing and I'll check the distance again. One foot. So I'm going to type P, take this up one foot, enter, back to my select tool. And then I clicked off of it just to see what it's looking like. And this is what I get so far. I want a gable roof, which means that it's only gonna have a slope on two sides. So let me go ahead and do that now. And I'll simply double click on my roof again. Zooming in here, I'm going to draw a line. So I type L. And then I want to pick it from the midpoint and I want to take it all the way across to the midpoint there. Back to my select tool. And then what I'd like to do is take that line, I picked it and then type M for move and then pick it from this point and move it up and see how it's going to give me the effect that I want. But I'm not quite sure how high I need to go. Let me tap the escape key again, tap my space bar and click off of it. Going back to my AutoCAD drawing, I liked the slope on this roof. So all I'm going to do is run a distance check or better than that, I'm going to click on measure and I'm gonna do a quick measure. And it tells me that the height there is approximately five foot four and then some. Now, I'm not too concerned about getting that pitch right. Only because it's going to take a little bit of extra time. But I do know that the roof has a height of about five feet, four inches. So I'll use that number and that'll bring me close enough to the pitch that I want. Five foot four going up. So I'll go back to my SketchUp model, select the roof, give it a double click. And now I pick the line and I type M and I'll pick it from anywhere on the edge. I click on it. I want it to go straight up so I can strain the blue axis. I use my up arrow key and I'd like it to go up five feet, four inches. I type that in and enter. And then I'll tap the space bar, click off of the roof. And this is what it's looking like. 
what I'd like to do is I'd like to give the soffit in the front here. I'm going to offset to get that finish that I want. I'm going to give my roof a double click again. And now I'm going to use the offset tool. And I'd like to offset this edge. And I'm going to bring it in, let's say, eight inches. So I'll type eight and enter. Then I'm going to draw a line from here straight down. Let me angle this a little bit better so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll draw a line from here straight down there. And then I'm going to type E and erase this segment. And now what I'd like to do is type P, take that surface and push it all the way back to the other side. And let me orbit, let me orbit. It's still pushing it, still pushing it. When I get to this side, I want it to be on the face and I click. And that's the kind of roof that I wanted to show you. I'm going to tap my space bar and then click away from the group. And now my building will have to come up to meet it. And I'll get there in just a moment. And I'm also noticing that I might want my soffit to come in a little bit more. And I'll fix that in a second too. As I look at it, it's really just the exterior walls that I need to bring up. What I will do is I will double click my walls. They are now isolated. And now if I select that surface, you notice how it goes all the way to the inside walls. And I don't want that to happen. I'm going to delineate the edge of my exterior walls. I'm going to use my line tool. And I'm going to draw a line here all the way across. And that'll separate it out. It also drops in a surface there, and that's okay. I use my space bar, select the surface, delete it, select that surface, delete, and do the same with the other two surfaces. And then I'll continue going across. I'll draw a line from here to there. That closes that out. Coming over to this side, I'll need to extend the surface, but I'll take care of that in a little bit. Over on this side, I'll draw a line from here over to that end point. And let's see if that'll do the trick. I'll tap the space bar. I'll click on the surface. And now it's picked everything except the inside walls. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. So now I can go ahead and pull these up using my push pull. I can click on that surface and I can start to bring them up. I don't know how high up, but I do know that I'd like them to go past the roof. So let me go ahead and change my view. And I know it's going to make that grow, but I'm trying to come over here to my menu and I want to change the component edit and not hide the rest of the model. This gives me an idea as to how tall I really need to make my walls. So as long as they make it past the roof, I'm okay. So I'm going to click right here. And then I can take a look at it and I can see how they are intersecting the roof. I have this issue here in the middle, but that's okay because just might work out. I may not need to do anything there. We'll see. Tap the space bar, click off of the group, and this is what I get. Now my goal is going to be to use my solid tools. I have to make sure that I'm dealing with solids. I will click on the roof. I look at the entity info. It has a volume. Great. That means it's a solid. I will select the building, the walls. And that is showing me a volume as well. Now what I'd like to do is select one of these solid tools so that I can continue to edit my walls. I know that it's not going to be subtract because I want to keep my roof and my walls. There's trim. And this one tells me that it will trim the first solid against the second, and it's going to keep both in the model. That might be the one to use. And then there's split. 
where it indicates that it intersects all the solids and it's going to keep all the results in the model. I'm not sure which one of the two, so I'm going to go ahead and begin with trim. I'm going to click off of the model because I don't want anything selected. And now I'm going to click on trim. And I'm prompted to select the first solid. I'll pick the roof as solid number one. Now I'm prompted to select the second solid. So I'll pick my walls. And now something happened. I'll tap my space bar and then click off of my objects. Looks like the roof is still there and looks like my building is still there. Or rather the walls. If I double click the roof and I go to hide the rest of the model, that looks fine. If I double click my walls, this is what I get. And it has separated them out. So now it's just a matter of me being able to erase the top portion because now that it has been split, I'll be able to use that and modify my walls as needed. I will give this top portion a double click and it looks like it selects the face and nothing else. Let me go ahead and give that a triple click. And when I triple click it, notice how it selects everything, but everything that is above the roof because it was separated out. And that's great. And all I have to do now is tap delete. It's gone. And now I can go ahead and click off of my group. And these are the results that I get. And now I think what I'd like to do is actually take my soffit and actually bring this edge in so that it covers all the way up to the underside or it meets the edge of the wall. So to do this, I actually just have to fill that space in, fill that gap in. Here's what I could do. I basically just want to see that profile or this elevation. And right now I'm in perspective mode. So I wanna switch my camera and I wanna switch it to parallel projection. And then what I'd like to do is change. And let me take my solid tools and dock them back up here and then bring these down so I can see that a little better. And it's gonna be one of the views here. Maybe it's the front view. So I'm going to click on front. Nope, is it the right side? I guess I could use the right side, either the right side or the left side. It's gonna give me the same result. And I really just want to get a good look at this area because what I'm going to do is draw a shape in here so that I can fill that area in. So this is going to work. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to give this a try. And I think what I'll do is draw a line and I'll basically just start tracing this over. And I wanna make sure that I snap and I stay on this green axis. So I'm going to use my left arrow key. It tries to find that endpoint and it doesn't. So as long as I move my cursor a bit more, when it finds that line, it looks like it can intersect it. But notice how it was intersecting on the outside. I don't want that. Maybe if I move it down here, it'll intersect. And it looks like that would work. So I'll click on it. Bring it up here. I'd like to make sure that it constrains to the blue axis. So I'll use my up arrow key. And notice how anywhere along that edge, it's going to align to it. So I'm going to click. So I've got two lines drawn. Now I'm going to draw this line. Hope it's still in the same plane. I don't know if it is. I'm gonna find out soon enough. So I'll draw that line and then one more here. And sure enough, it looks like it gave me that shape that I wanted. I just had to be really careful with that. I'll switch my camera back to perspective. And it changed, and so I just have to zoom out and really, really zoom out. And I need to see where I created that. And there's the shape. So what I'm going to do now is type P, push pull this from this end all the way to the back end. Right there. And I'll zoom in a little bit more and make sure that it snaps to that endpoint. And I've got the shape that I wanted. And then I'm going to tap my space bar, triple click, right click, make that group. 
Now, what I'd like to do is have that same shape on the opposite side. So I'm going to copy it. So I type M, I pick this point, take it over, all the way over here, keep it constrained to that green axis like that, tap the control key so it makes a copy, and then click. And now I will go to my scale tool. And this one, I have to make sure I pick the right scale point. This point right here should work out. If I click on it, it'll take it this way or it'll take it in the other direction. I'd like to go in the opposite direction, minus one. That way it gives me the mirror image. So I type minus one and enter. And now I'm going to move it into place. So I will type M, move it from that corner over to this endpoint. Okay. Now I want this to look as if it's one single solid. I'll take my views, move those tools back up, and I'll bring my solids back down so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to select this one that says outer shell. It will combine all of the selected solids into one single solid. And then it's going to remove the interior entities. So I'll click on that one. Notice how is indicating to select the second solid. And that's because I still had this one selected. I don't want to get confused. I'm going to tap the escape key, escape again. I'm going to tap my space bar, click off of my model and start all over just to make sure that I get this done right. Outer shell, select the first solid. I'll pick this one, second solid, that one. And notice how it cleans up that corner, that edge. It becomes one single solid. And I'll do the same thing over here. Looks like I'm still in that mode. So I can try to pick this as my second solid instead of starting all over. And it took it. So that's great. I'm all set. So that's how I would put in that type of a roof. And then I will go ahead and tap the space bar and click off of my solid and continue. Let me move this back up. As I look at my model, if I go inside the model, and I'll try to do that through one of the windows here, just to practice navigating. I can zoom, zoom, zoom in and force the issue, go through the glass. And I am now in that space and I can orbit and I have to be real careful to stay inside. It's going to be entirely up to you what would you like to do? No, I went too far. Let me zoom back in. There we go. What would you like to do? Would you like to keep that ceiling vaulted like that? Or would you like to put in a flat ceiling? These are choices that you can make. By the way, now that I'm inside of the building, I can use some other navigation tools. So if I come over here to my large tool set, I can click on the footprints here, the shoe prints, and I can walk with the camera. So if I click on that, I can go ahead and simply click and drag. So I'm going to click one time here and then hold that mouse key down and then move my cursor up slowly. And I begin to move within the space. And by the way, I just released the uh, mouse. If I click and drag down, I'm moving back. And when I do this, I believe it's going to let me go as far back until I am close to the wall. And now it will not go any further because I am at the wall. That's really nice because it keeps me inside of the building. So that's helpful. Another tool that I can use is this one. It's the eye and it will allow me to look around. So I can click on look around. And when I do that, first of all, before I even start looking around, it tells me that the eye height is approximately five foot four. So that's a good height. But if I wanted to change that, all I have to do is just type in a different value. I could say six feet and enter. And when I do that, notice how it moves me up so that I am at a six foot eye level. And now I can take this eye and I can click and drag it to look around my space. Now my building is not complete. It's missing windows. I can look around. but your building will have windows. So you'll be able to look outside. Now, what I'd like to do is walk over towards my kitchen. So I'm going to use the walk tool, click and drag. 
moves me towards the kitchen and I think it might stop me. No, it did not. Okay. Looks like it jumped over it. Interesting. So now I'm more or less in the kitchen area. I will go back and use the look around. And when I click look around, it did jump me. The eye height is now eight feet and then some inches. So I'm going to set that back to six feet or maybe five foot six. There we go. And I'm almost standing right there on top of the uh, counter there. And that's okay. Now I'm going to look around. I will click and drag to take me across, release my mouse, click and drag again from one side to the other and do this one more time. And that's the space I have. Now it looks a little tight and that's because of my cone of vision here. To change that, I can come over here to the magnifying glass where it says zoom and click on that. And you'll notice Field of view is 35 degrees. I'm going to change that. I'm going to type in 50 degrees and enter. Notice how it makes it appear wider, but that's only because I changed my angle. It's almost like when you take a camera now on your phones and you go with a wide angle lens, that's more or less what I'm doing here. And if I increase that number, let's say I increase it to 60 degrees and then enter. Now it's appearing very wide, but it's now giving me some really dramatic effects that maybe I don't want to have. I probably want to limit my field of view anywhere to 35 degrees and maybe no more than 50 or so. And maybe you want to narrow it and go 20 degrees like that, which really kind of zooms me into that one spot right there. Change it around. You will be generating an interior view. So now's a good time to practice. And it also helps you to model inside of that space. I'm going to set this back to the 35 where it was before. And I'm all set there. I'll go back to my select tool. And I've decided that I do not want such a high roof in my space. So let me show you what I'm going to do just as an example. So let me orbit out of my model like this out this way. I'm going to take that roof and I'm going to hide it. And now in my building, I wanted my ceilings to be eight feet. What I'm going to do is come in here and generate that ceiling at eight feet. One of the things I could do is basically just come into each one of the rooms and draw a rectangle to generate a ceiling inside of it. And let me constrain to blue axis. So I'm going to use my up arrow key and constrain right there. So I can do that individually. That'll work. Or if there's a way, I can also now perhaps continue all the way across. And let's see if this will work. Let's say I draw a line from here all the way across, constrain to that axis, click, bring it over this way, make sure it's constraining to the axis, click in this direction, in that direction. I have to be careful here. There we go, constrained to green, but I need to orbit. Click there, bring it over. Constrain right there. Click there and just keep following that perimeter of my building like this. Come over this way. And now I'm just going to overlap like that. And I'm going to continue. And it looks like it stopped drawing. So I'm gonna come back and draw the line there. And just like that, I have a ceiling and I will immediately tap my space bar and triple click and then right click and make my group. And then I'll double click to edit my ceiling. And it looks like I don't need the lines there. So I'm going to type E and just simply click and drag to erase the lines like that. And then tap my space bar. And if I wanted to, I can give my ceiling a thickness. It's not necessary, but it doesn't hurt. So I'm going to type P, give my ceiling a thickness. It doesn't have to be too thick. I might just make it one inch. And then tap the space bar, click off of it. And then I'll go to edit, 
unhide last. And now when I go back into my building, like this, and I'm trying to orbit. And what I should be doing is clicking on the eye, setting my eye height at five foot six or any value that I want, and then look around. So now I have that flat ceiling. Back to my select tool. And then the last thing I want to do is start to put in some floor finishes here. I'll go ahead and double click on this floor like that, and it isolates the floor. I think what I'd like to do is just start to break it apart. And in order to do that, I really do need to see my wall. So let's see if I can do this. If I go to view component edit and not hide the rest of the model. Well, now the roof is in the way. So let's, let me try something here. I will click off of my base and I'll take the roof and I guess I'll hide it again. I'll take my ceiling. I'll hide that too. And this is what I'm left with. I'll take that AutoCAD drawing. I'll go ahead, right click and hide that as well. Now I should be able to double click on my base. And this is better. And now what I can go ahead and do is remind myself that the walls are not part of my group. So I'll just go ahead and draw a line. Let's say from here over there, bring it across this way, take it over that way get into that corner if I can, click on it over here and then over there. Now that should have made a separate surface. And if I tap my space bar and click on it, there we go, it has been separated out. And let's say here, I'd like to go with a wood floor. I go ahead and look for my materials. There's wood. I'd like to go with this type of a wood floor, click on it and I'm all set. Tap my space bar click off of it, and I'm on my way. And that's how I can change the materials for the floor. Let's say I want a different material inside of my room. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'll double click my base, and I know that I can draw a rectangle from this corner all the way to the opposite corner right there and then hit the space bar, tap on the surface. It is now separate. Go into my materials. There's some synthetic surfaces. Do I have carpeting? Is there carpeting anywhere? I've got patterns with this work, not necessarily. Oh, there it is, carpet and fabric. So maybe this carpet and then click on it. That might work. I can come back and check it later. But let me show you what I just did though, if I can isolate the surface. Let me go to edit, no, I'm sorry, view, component edit, and hide the rest of the model. So that's all that's happened so far. So basically, if I draw a rectangle on this surface, I'm actually separating that surface from the other ones. But I don't wanna do that, so let me edit undo. This is how I was able to create the other surfaces out here for my deck. Let's see if I click on the deck. Let me go ahead and double click my floor and go ahead and click on view, component edit. I don't want to hide the rest of the model. I'll just draw a line from here over and then that way and that way. Tap my space bar, that's a separate surface. I'll go over here to my materials and maybe here I want to pick a uh, wood material. If there's something that resembles maybe a wood deck, let's try that one. Maybe that will work. I'm just trying some different things is all. And then of course I'll bring my roof back and hide the last item. And then I would have to add a material to the roof. And this is how I can continue to add to my model. Feel free to embellish any way that you want. You can go to the warehouse if you'd like to find some furniture to add to the model, put it in place. Maybe there's some outdoor furniture. And then once I've made these changes, I can go ahead and save them. And then I'll click on file and I'd like to open my 3D site. 
So I need to go to that folder. I open up the site. I can go ahead and select the model. It's considered a component. So I can right click it and reload. And I look for my updated version. I select it and I click open. Give it a moment, it updates, and then I can click off of it and I can continue to edit my site. And this is what I meant about showing some buildings in the background. If I'm standing here looking at my building. I can see some buildings back there. That was the reason for that in my AutoCAD drawing. So let me just show you the AutoCAD drawing real quick. That's what I was aiming for, to show some buildings in the background. Embellish it any way that you'd like. It helps to put in these conceptual masses. It's like adding entourage, like putting the trees and the people. And it helps to give your building a sense of scale. And continue to add to your model. And then we will generate some views and continue with the model itself.